So what's going to happen if we have cyclohexene and if we react it with, let's say, potassium permanganate, KMNO4, under basic conditions, and let's say if we keep the temperature low. What's going to be the major product in this reaction? Under these conditions, you're going to get syn dihydroxylation. So you're going to get a diol, a 1,2 diol, but with syn addition, or syn stereochemistry. And so you're going to have two hydroxyl groups being on the same side. So you can draw your product like that, or you can draw it like this. Now, notice that these two products are identical. Due to an internal plane of symmetry, these two products are meso products. So therefore, because they're identical, we only get one product in this reaction. Now, another reagent that can do the same thing is this one. OSO4 followed by, in the second step, sodium bisulfite. So this will lead to the same product, and that is the cis-1,2-diol. Now let's go back to this reaction. So once we have this alkene, and once we react it with potassium permanganate under basic conditions, before we get our final product, we get a manganate ester, which looks something like this. But before we get it, here's the reaction mechanism for that step. So this reacts with the permanganate ion, which looks like this. So this double bond is going to break. It's going to connect between these two atoms. And then this bond will break. And these electrons will go back to the manganese atom. And so you should really get uh, this structure, which I don't need to draw it again. So you're going to get this manganate ester, but there should be a lone pair here. So let's go ahead and put that. So that's the product of the first step. And then once you react it with hydroxide, let's go this way. It will hydrolyze into the cis -dial. Now let's go back to cyclohexene. And let's react it with osmium tetroxide, which looks like this. And so what's going to happen is the double bond between the osmium and the oxygen atom will break, and the carbon carbon double bond will break. And this will give us something called an osmate ester. And so you can see that this mechanism is very similar to the formation of the manganate ester. Now we should have a lone pair here. So after adding osmium tetroxide, the next step is to react it with sodium bisulfite, and typically in water as well. And the end result will be the same, is that we're going to get the cis diol. And so I want you to see the step-by-step -step process for that reaction. Now, starting with the 1,2 diol, what do you think is going to happen if we react this with per iodic acid? Now, whenever you react a 1,2 diol with per iodic acid, the carbon-carbon bond will cleave. And those two diols, they're going to be oxidized into an aldehyde. So you can redraw the structure like this. We have a total of six carbon atoms with an aldehyde at the end. So two, three, four, five, six. And so this is going to be the product of this reaction. So per iodic acid can convert diols into aldehydes and ketones. 
if this were, if there was a carbon here, then instead of having let's say an aldehyde, this would be a ketone now. But since we don't have that carbon, these two are aldehydes. Consider this reaction. Let's say if we have a cyclohexene ring, but with a methyl group already present. And let's react it with potassium permanganate under cold basic conditions. So how many products will we get in this reaction? So we know we're going to get a diol with syn stereochemistry. So this is one way in which we can draw the products for this reaction. Or we can draw it this way with the two hydroxyl groups on a dash. So what is the relationship between these two products? Are they identical or are they different? Well, clearly they're different. We don't have meso compounds anymore. We no longer have an internal plane of symmetry. Here it's symmetrical, but we don't have another methyl group to make it symmetrical across that line. So since we don't have meso compounds, we have two different stereoisomers. And would you classify these isomers as constitutional isomers, enantiomers, diastereomers, stereoisomers? What type of isomer do we have? Well, for one thing, these two are stereoisomers. They're not constitutional. Constitutional isomers are isomers that are connected differently. They're connected the same. Let's call this carbon 1. On carbon 1, we have an OH group. On carbon 2, we have one. And on carbon 4, we have a methyl. So the connectivity is the same. But the way these three substituents are arranged in space is different. So these are stereoisomers. Now, what type of stereoisomers do we have here? Are we dealing with uh, enantiomers or are we dealing with diastereomers? In order for us to have enantiomers, all of the chiral centers have to change. So these two chiral centers, they change. They went from being on the dash to the wedge. However, this chiral center did not change. So therefore, we don't have enantiomers. We have a pair of diastereomers. So if some of the chiral centers change, but not all of them, then you have diastereomers. And so that is the relationship between these two products. Now let's say if we have cis 2 butene, what's going to happen if we react it with potassium permanganate under acidic conditions with heat as well? Let's say it's concentrated. Now let's compare that with cis 2 butene and react in it with potassium permanganate under cold basic conditions. Well, we know under cold basic conditions, we're going to get two hydroxyl groups, syn addition. And so this is a meso compound. We're going to get one product here. Now, if you use concentrated potassium permanganate, or if you acidify the solution, or if you add heat, it's not going to stop at this level. It's going to cleave that carbon-carbon bond. And so what you're going to get is two carboxylic acids. If the carbon atom, after you cleave it, is primary, it's going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. If it's secondary, it's going to go to the ketone level. If it's just a methyl carbon, it's going to be fully oxidized to CO2. So let me give you some examples. So consider this structure. Let's use potassium permanganate under acidic conditions. So it's going to cleave here. Now, what you need to do is separate these two molecules. And wherever you see a double bond, just add an oxygen to it. And these are going to be the two products. So here we have a ketone 
but this won't be an aldehyde. It's going to be oxidized to a carboxylic acid. So after you cleave it, this carbon will be secondary, and this will be primary after you cleave it, not before. And so the primary carbon will be fully oxidized to a carboxylic acid. Now here's another example. So let's say we use potassium permanganate and we heat it. And let's say it's concentrated. What's going to be the major product in this case? So we're going to cleave it here. What I'm going to do is draw some hydrogens. So after we cleave it, this carbon here is going to be primary. And this one, that's a methyl carbon. It's not primary. It's by itself. And so the primary carbon is going to be fully oxidized to a carboxylic acid. The methyl carbon will be oxidized to CO2. And so that's what's going to happen if you use potassium permanganate under acidic conditions, if it's heated, or if it's concentrated.